Hi guys, Lanthode here, and today I want to bring you a Hunter Ranger build and play style guide for Neverwinter on Xbox One. I never played the game on PC, um, I'm assuming like lots of you, and I really struggled to find some good information, to find a good build uh, for my Hunter Ranger when I started playing. And I think that's just because a lot of it was outdated and the game's a lot less popular on PC perhaps than it's proven to be on Xbox. Uh, However, I wasn't put off. Tried making my own builds. First of all, tried archery, uh, but I really struggled with that. Didn't do very much damage. Felt like I was a detriment to the team. Constantly bottom with the leaderboards and struggling to get kills in PvP. Uh, so I switched it up. Tried the melee tree. I think it's called combat. And again, not doing very much damage. It was a little bit better, but again, it wasn't very fun. And I still wasn't doing better than the majority of my team. Uh, finally, I tried trapper and everything changed. The class was so much fun. You're constantly flying around the battlefield like a squirrel. Um, so much damage. Topping PvE leaderboards, topping the kills in PvP, no problem at all. And it was just really, really fun to play again. Uh, the build focuses on strong damage, uh, a lot of CC, and a lot of survivability, like I said, through maneuverability. You just You just don't stop moving. It's hard for mobs to keep up with you. Uh, what you've been watching in the background is a couple of the bosses from the Pirate's Lair dungeon, uh, which is the easiest T2 epic dungeon. Um, just running it with some friends, and you've been able to see the rotations and the damage this build is capable of. Uh, now, first of all, I want to talk about the build itself and the feats that I'm using. Uh, we'll start off with the feats. So this focuses on stance switching. When we switch stances, we move faster for six seconds. Who doesn't like maneuverability? Um, next one is Death Strikes. Our melee encounters power up our next range encounter and vice versa. Um, straight damage buffs. Ancient Roots. Our weak grasping roots now last 2.5 seconds longer and strong last 5 seconds longer. And the base durations are 1 second and 2 seconds respectively. So they go up to a hell of a lot more than they started at 3.5 and 7. And that's before any CC duration is applied, which we get later on in the build as well. So when we've got a 7 second strong grass and root, that's really, really strong CC. Even when it's halved on players and PvP, it's still very significant. Uh, swiftness of the Fox. Melee encounters powering, uh, rather shortening the cooldowns of our range encounters and vice versa. This is one of the real highlights of the build. As a ranger, we, our main, re main strength really is that we get 6 encounter slots rather than most classes getting 3. Um, and when we can use one set of encounters to reduce the cooldowns of the others, as you're seeing here, it makes for almost no cooldown whatsoever, as long as we keep switching stances and keep using our three powers. So the rotation is really important here, and we can just use encounters without using at wills whatsoever. Um, the next feat that we focus on is Thorned Roots. Uh, this buffs our strong grasping roots, which is a key part of the build. They're now going to do 200% weapon damage every second. 200% um, is a lot, first of all. And because of the other feats, like we've already mentioned, they last for at least 7 seconds. Uh, that's before CC duration is applied. And big ticks of damage, long duration, AoE. It's very, very powerful, and that's where most of our damage in this build comes from. Um, Aspect of the Serpent class feature, which is one of the ones that we use, also now provides 5% more damage per stack and 2.5% crit chance per stack. So now it's a total of 3 stacks of 24% damage, 7.5% crit chance, which is really, really significant buff. Definitely, definitely recommend using this class feature. And finally, Biting Snares. This is absolutely essential. Uh, the best point you can spend as a Hunter Ranger, as far as I'm concerned. Whenever you apply any type of Grasping Roots, you get Biting Snares, uh, which when you switch stance gives you Master Trapper, blah blah blah. Master Trapper instantly generates 20% of your AP, so you can spam dailies all day long. Uh, it increases your damage by 30%, which is huge, without, goes without saying, and increases control durations, uh, which I've already mentioned, very useful, by 60%. So those 7 second durations are now closer to 11 seconds. Um, 
this buff lasts for 10 seconds and you can only apply it every 10 seconds uh, but basically we apply it every 10 seconds without really trying anyway just because we're switching classes so often and applying grasping roots so often um, so it's much more of a passive buff than anything else um, the heroic feats are much less important I've just gone for some crit chance, HP uh, start switching obvious choice, more damage uh, stamina regeneration everyone likes stamina regenerating faster Encounters dealing more damage. We only use encounters, not really using at wills, so it's an obvious choice. Um, bonus damage from dexterity. Simple choices. Uh, the powers themselves, the at wills, although we don't use them all the time, we still have to pick two of them. Uh, rapid shot, rapid strike is an obvious choice. Uh, it does good single target damage. Uh, if we ever have downtime, if we mess up a rotation, which can happen, you might have a few seconds to pop some shots off. Left trick, I use aim shot, aim strike. Aim shot. You saw me using it at the very, very start of the video. It's only really useful at the very start of a fight. Um, aim strike, however, is a really nice skill. Uh, if you've got downtime and you're in melee stance, use aim strike on a single target that has a lot of health. Boss fight, for example, or in a rooted player in PvP, and it'll deal a good amount of ticking bleed damage. Encounters, I use Marauder's Escape, Marauder's Rush. Uh, this is really why we're so hard to kill. Um, you're flying around the battlefield non-stop using these two. I tend to open a fight with a ranged encounter, uh, as you'll see here, and then after attacking and rooting my enemy, I switch to melee and use rush to close the gap, do significant damage, and then I can apply my other melee encounters, perhaps use my daily if it's up as it was there, and then I would switch onto range and continue my rotation by leaping back when Marauders escape. Uh, the next encounter I use hindering shot, uh, hindering shot and hindering strike. Hindering shot itself is, it does decent direct physical damage uh, but more importantly it plays weak grasping roots and I really like this skill because it has the three charges. You can use it three times in fairly quick succession before any cooldown sets in. So if you do ever find yourself in a pinch with your melee encounters, you're waiting for perhaps three seconds for them, quickly switch the range, fire a hindering shot, then back to melee and you're ready to go again. Uh, hindering strike, probably my favourite skill. Uh, does a big AoE melee attack, 360 degrees, and it applies those strong grasping roots, which are our main damage dealers. You can see without buffing it at all, I'm doing 6,000 crits to one of those dummies. Non-crit, over 3,000 damage, and that's without trying to significantly buff the damage. Uh, the final encounter I use, Constricting Arrow with Steel Breeze. Um, Constricting Arrow is kind of the range equivalent of Hindering Strike, uh, in that it applies strong grasping roots in a 360 degree AoE. Unfortunately, it's not quite a, such a big AoE um, as Hindering Strike, but you can see where my character's running, that's probably the sort of radius you're looking at for it to deal. So if mobs are clustered up, um, then it will still be able to hit the majority of them, no problem. Uh, Steel Breeze, the melee variant of the encounter, uh, again, 360, 360 degree damage, not huge damage, but the more important thing is it's an encounter that quickly helps reset our range encounters and it also um, gives us a lot of our stamina back. If you look at my stamina bar now, and I'll use Steel Breeze, the stamina bar shoots up about a third of its filled. That gives me enough for two dodges again straight away. Really, really, really helpful, especially in PvP. Um, the dailies I use are Seismic Shot. I'm just going to generate some AP quickly here. You see that I went from half to full in practically no time at all. Seismic Shot groups enemies up, fantastic use in PvE to cluster them together. Uh, it also deals pretty hefty damage as well. I do use it in PvP um, as well, although not all the time. I also switch it up and occasionally use Disruptive Shot. This is much more for when you're in a 1v1 situation, uh, particularly against rogues or fast moving targets, hard to hit people. Um, if you can just get a Disrupting Shot off on them, daze them for enough time for you to get them rooted um, so you avoid them going to stealth you avoid them backstabbing you for huge damage the class features are aspect of the serpent I've already talked about uh, it's just gonna increase our damage big time uh, there's nothing wrong with it at all aspect of the pack uh, gives you combat advantage uh, to you and an ally if they're close to you combat advantage if you didn't know is a straight 15% damage buff so it's really really handy to have I definitely wouldn't turn that down uh, finally, I think I'm just going to show you a few rotations of the build in action. 
and I'll start off going quite slow and then speed it up. So I start off in range uh, usually. I'm usually in range stance when I start a fight. And I'll fire one of my routing range attacks, um, switch to melee, close the gap with Marauder's Rush, then apply my other two melee encounters in an AoE. I can now switch back to range. Marauder's Escape gets me out of danger again. And then I can apply my two other range encounters, deal some damage, get some roots applied, switch back to melee. Notice that Master Trap is almost always up for those huge damage buffs and AP gains. Switch back to range, Marauder's Escape, fire my two arrows, switch back to melee, Marauder's Rush, use my two melee damage encounters. Oh, I've got full energy, so I can use a daily as well. Switch back to range, use my two arrows, and you just rinse and repeat this. Switch back to melee, close the gap again. Very, very strong. So I just want to finish off the video with a few PvP clips. You can see how the build gets on there as well. The burst damage is crazy, uh, but I think what's more important is that it's not really burst damage, you can sustain it so easily if you rotate your cooldowns properly. Um, and the burst can come from both melee and range stance. The daily generation being so quick is a huge bonus as well, as you'll see in the next clip, uh, where I come across a big group fighting in the middle, burst them down, daily energy's up. In fact, they're all dead at this point anyway. Four people killed in a very, very short space of time with the help of my teammates. The last clip is a 2v1, uh, the control wizards trying to do damage and the warrior is helplessly trying to keep up with me but I keep rooting him, keep moving. The wizard is not very sensible, he just stands still, lets me root him. Once he's dealt with I can take my time finishing off the warrior and capture the flag. And the very last clip you're going to see is against one of the tougher bosses in dungeons at the moment, the overseer. Lots of uh, groups struggle with him. I was actually in a pickup group that wiped uh, during the fight, and this just shows that the build's very capable of kiting, but still doing damage at the same time. Um, thank you for watching the video. Hope to see you soon.